Hi, Facebook. Hi. Welcome to Manifestation Bathtub. Welcome to our bathtub. I'm Rosie. Bathtub. I'm Kit. We're the volcanoes. And this is our bathtub. Every week we do a show called Manifestation Bathtub live, live from, from our, our bathtub. bathtub where we talk about the law of attraction and uh, our experience with it. And, and how to manifest cool shit in your life. Yeah, because we're pretty good at it. We're and pretty fucking good at it. We've been it. doing it for a while. And so if you like these videos and you'd like to share them with your friends, go ahead and hit share. Hit the share button. Share this share, video share, with your share. friends so they can see it too. And um, otherwise, you know, we just do this every Monday morning. So just feel free to join us anytime. We also invite guests onto our show. So if you'd like to be a guest on Manifestation Bathtub. Come be a guest. Be our be guest. guest. Be our guest. Just send us a little message. We'll bring you on. And the other thing too is if you're hearing something and it's amazing and you're like, wow, my best friend from college needs to hear this, tag them. Yeah. Tag them. You never know whose life you could change when you point them in the right direction of the perfect message. Yeah. So today's episode is about who do you need to become to receive bigger. And so let's just talk about a massive, 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 massive manifestation story that happened this weekend. Yeah. This weekend. Well, it started with Kyle Cease. Kyle Cease. This weekend we went to Kyle Cease. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Kyle Cease, he's fucking amazing. Yeah. Actually. He's a, he's a sure semi-famous comedian turned transformational speaker slash coach and he is great he is just so funny and so down to earth and so real and um so kind and loving as well I, um it's not like watching a tony robbins on stage where you're just like uh, it's more like watching like your buddy go up on stage and talk about this stuff something awesome and then just bring people up on stage and fully accept them and help them get breakthroughs he's just and he just does it in such a an easy and um, kind of casual way where, where he makes people really comfortable. Um, really comfortable. Yeah. And, and so it was at the Dolby Theater in you Hollywood. You don't know what the Dolby Theater is. The Dolby, the Dolby Theater is where the Oscars are hosted. Yeah. It's a big fancy theater. Big fancy theater. Right on Hollywood Boulevard. Mezzanines and, and big, huge stage lights and red curtains. Right by the Wax Museum. It is. <laughs> Just it is just this epically beautiful place, and um, we're sitting there, and he writes down. Oh, you know, I have it written down so I can read it to you. Within the first hour, he asks us, "Write down what you're afraid of. Write down what you want, but what you're afraid of." And I write, "I'd love to get on stage this weekend, but I'm afraid to take half-ass action and get rejection." You know, you know how you're you're in in the audience and you're kind of like, well, maybe, yeah, uh, and then you shut yourself down really quick, or you go, me, oh wait, not me, and then the sh the shame of like say kind of halfway committing to something and then pulling yourself back shoves you back into the the closet of, of not doing what you wanted to do for you know the rest of the weekend. So I was afraid to kind of be that person that. Kind of commits and then doesn't actually go in. But I really wanted to be on that stage. And I, I knew I was supposed to be on that stage. For some reason, I was just like, I've seen myself on this stage. Honey, we should, we're supposed to be here. We're going to have the Dolby one day. We're going to have this for ourselves. And I just, I want to be up there. It would be so much fun. And um, Kyle asked a question. And this is about an hour into the show. And I do this. Me. And then okay, I, well, I need to say what he asked the question about, though, because yeah. I think it's really interesting. What did he ask? Okay, so what he was talking about was, um, what are the things in your life that feel like a 10? The things that you do that feel like you're expanding when you do them? Um, and what are some of those things in your life? So some of the things in your life that might be considered a 10 would be like um, traveling to Italy. And I, I want to know, <laughs> I learned, I want to know um, from you guys watching, what are the things that you do in your life that help you feel like you are expanding, that you are at a 10, right? If 10 is the highest you can go, this is the most expansive, amazing experience of your life, what would that be? Maybe swimming in the ocean, or maybe climbing a mountain, or going to Italy, or um, yeah, for me, like I love going to Harry Potter World. 
We love going to Disneyland. That's a 10 for me. Um, what else is a 10? Uh, a 10 is coaching. A 10 is meditation. Absolutely. A 10 is uh, manifestation bathtub. Anything that helps you feel like you're expanding. So, And then what he, what he um, asked was, what percentage of your life do you live out of 10? So what percentage of your days do you spend doing things that are a 10 for you? And so, that was a really crazy question for a lot of people because most people in that audience, I think, realize that they're only spending maybe 10 or 15% of their lives doing things that help them feel like they're at a 10. And, um, which Kit and I feel really lucky. We looked at each other and my, I was at a 78. I was at a 75. 75% of my life feels like a 10 to me right now. And the, the other 25% is okay that it's not a 10. Because if you lived 100% out of 10, it might be a little overwhelming. And so I feel pretty happy with that. And then, so what he asked was, write a list of, of other things that you could bring into your life that could, on a regular basis, that could help you feel more like you're living at a 10 um, all the time. And so we had all written down these lists of things. And one of the things that Kit wrote down. I'll tell you a minute. Okay, was this amazing idea that he got. It's an incredible idea. I, I was just so pumped and so excited about it. And um, after we wrote down our ideas, he asked, what is, yes. what's one of the things that you wrote down that is at a 10? And people started raising their hands. And Kit raised his hand and immediately Kyle looked at him and said, yeah, you in the blue shirt. And Kit stands up and Kit just starts telling a story. He doesn't say one of the things, he just says, so I was thinking about this, and da da da, and, and he starts going into the story about what it is, and Kyle's like, all right, just come up come here on, on the stage. Up. And so Kit runs up to the run stage. Run up to the stage, and... He does this little dance. He's so excited. I'm on stage, one hour into the show at the Dolby Theater with 3,000 people watching me. Yeah, and, and Kit is kind of sneaking up behind Kyle, and then just bear hugged him. And Kyle was like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're hugging now. And then he, they, they unhugged and Kyle looked at Kit and he goes, are you me? Because they actually look a, lot, look a alike. lot alike. And they were wearing very similar outfits. And he just goes, are you me? And like, Kit was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I am. then. So we role played and he basically gave me the stage for like five he, minutes. He took off his blazer, Kit put on Kyle's blazer. And, and I then, put my name tag on Kyle. And then Kyle went back and, and sat, sat where Kit was seat. sitting and let Kit have the entire stage. For about basically. five minutes. And yeah. I pretty much ran evolving out loud for five minutes by myself. He I basically mean. just said, yeah, like, be me. So Kit was doing everything that Kyle had been doing. He was cueing the music. He was, he was cueing the baby crying in the audience. He was like, um, he, and then Kyle said, well, like, and then say, does anybody have a question? So good, so that Kyle could be Kit, right? Um, it, it was, it was, it was so, so surreal. It really it was. It was so surreal to have this strong desire and to have it happen, and, and a big one, and to have it happen within 30 minutes of wanting it. And just to fully receive and fully take that in. Yeah. And so, you know, the question, you know, we've worked a lot on our visions and a lot on what we want this weekend. And the question that really, really hit home with me that he said, he said, oh, I wrote it down. And I, I, yeah, this got me in a different way than I've ever been gotten. He said, when there's this big thing that you want. You need to put yourself in a position where you have to receive bigger than you ever have before. Mm. And so what that means to me what that means to me is not how much more do you have to do to make this happen? Mm -hmm. It's who do you need to shift into being so that you can receive this into your life? Yeah. Who do you need to see yourself as so you can have everything in place for this to work? Who do you need to see yourself as so you attract the right components for this to come into fruition? Yeah. Because there is nothing I could fucking do 
do, 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 from that seat to orchestrate Kyle Cease calling on me and giving me the reins of being Kyle Cease. It was all about who you were being. Except for just being me and believing in myself and letting go of those fears and those worries and letting go, you know, I didn't, I even half-assed committed, and I still got it. I was like, ah, no, ah, uh, no. Yeah, Kyle called on him, and Kit just sat there for a minute, like, I was like, Kit, I was like, calling on you. Oh, fuck, <laughs> this thing that I'm afraid of, that I really, really want, but I'm pushing away, is happening. Let me hide. I really want this. Let me hide. Oh, no, it's not happening. And then as soon as I was like, yes, it's happening. Okay, he I went for it. It was just a total he switch, like, and I went for it. He took over the whole theater. I took over the 3, whole fucking people. theater. Of Building 3, theater. That's where the people. Oscars are. That's where the Oscars are. And a part of me came out that I always knew was there mm -hmm. in such a bigger way than I ever really What's have like ever felt. Confident, kind of like showman, like entertainer. It's the thing that I'm always trying to be, but not actually uh, just letting it happen. Ah. Uh, because you're trying to do something to be I'm that person. To do it. Instead of just allowing and receiving. Yeah. Wow. All right, so I want to talk about um, like a, a smaller, more real life example of what this means. Um, because not all of us will get the chance to go on stage at the Dolby Theater in front of You could. People. But I'm just saying that might not be your dream, but how can you relate this concept to a real life situation? And, and one of the examples that we came up with this weekend was that before we moved to San Diego, the most we had ever paid in rent was $1,400 a month. Um, and that's, that's kind of, you know, that's what we were used to, and that was normal for Chicago, it was normal for Asheville, and um, that was the most we had ever paid. And so we moved to California, and we know that it's more expensive here. Um, and when we moved to California, we had no money, we didn't, I had, a, I had a job for Forest Yoga not doing much for them at the time, just kind of sending things from their store out every once in a while. It, you know, it was a couple hours a week, maybe. So it wasn't even enough to pay rent and we were living with our friends for free at the time, okay? So at that time, um, we had no idea how we would pay rent when we did get our own place. And what happened was, we knew we wanted to move to San Diego. We knew that we were being called there and we had to go. And we found a place and, you know, the cheapest rent you can really find in San Diego for something that's the size that we need to work from home, which is just a two bedroom apartment or a two bedroom house, was $2,000, $2,000 a month. So we were a tiny 800 square foot. It was just a box. Practically studio apartment that called itself a two bedroom. Yeah. With no drawers in the kitchen house. The drawers, the kitchen had no drawers. No okay. drawers. So, um, so $2,000 a month is a big jump from $1,400 a month. And that's not even what we were paying at the time. We were paying this much at the time. We were right? paying rental on a car, on, on a van that we drove across. We were living in a minivan, essentially. It was rented. Yeah. Um, and so we definitely um, enhanced our income to be able to move, and we definitely padded Photoshop. everything on our on our application. Photoshop is a great enhancement. Gosh. Photoshop because we knew that as soon as we got to San Diego, we, we would could have, do it. We would have the opportunities, and we would have the motivation to be the type of person that made enough money that $2,000 a month in rent was not a big deal. And we knew that if that pressure were put on us, we would have to expand ourselves to rise to meet it. Yeah, and you know what guys, like we even kept uh, job applications to Trader Joe's on our desk the entire time that we were trying to figure all this stuff out because what we kept saying was, if this business that we're trying to build right Got a phone call. We can always go work at Trader Joe's. And so that was our backup plan. If all else failed, we'll just go get full-time jobs at Trader Joe's. And that will surely give us enough money to pay for this place. But we moved to San Diego. And all of a sudden, we became those people. We, we became, became the people, people that we that had to be. paid $2,000 a month in rent. And it wasn't even an issue. It was never even a struggle. We were able to be the people that we needed to be to that that was our new normal
right? And that's what Kyle kept talking about was like, who do you need to be to, to feel as though this, this insane vision that you have that seems so unrealistic is actually your new normal? Instead of thinking, this is way over there and this is something that I'll never have because it's way over here, uh, just becoming the person to where that vision is, that's your everyday life. And he would use examples like, um, you know, you want to you wanna get famous one day, you want to be on Oprah one day, you need to Everybody become, wants to be on Oprah. Right. You need to become the person um, who thinks it's normal to have Oprah call them up and ask them to be on her show. And you need to believe that you're that person. If you don't believe that you're that person, you won't take the leaps, you won't, you won't lean in, mm -hmm. you won't jump towards what you want, and you won't ask to receive. Yeah. And even um, Life on Fire, the coaching company that we were coached by last year, um, one, of the, one of the things that they taught us was this concept of um, be, do, have instead of have, do, be, or do, be, have, or whatever, right? Be, so do, have instead of... <laughs> it's, it's, this is how it goes. It's basically you need to be the person who, you need to be the person who believes in themselves first to know the right things to do to have what you want instead of when doing, I have doing, this doing, thing, doing, right. I'll be able to do this thing so and that I'll I can be, be the person, person that I want to be. Right. So, so instead of doing things so that you can have the things so that you can have all the stuff to become that person. Um, and so this, this is the biggest message for you guys today. And this is the biggest part of manifestation that is the key. If you don't have this part down, if you can't grab a hold of it and just and just let your imagination fly with it, it's never gonna make sense to you because you're always gonna feel like you have to do something more, do something different, work yourself to the bone, you know, have five jobs just to feel validated enough to be that person who has the money to afford the $2,000 apartment. Instead, you need to be that person first. Yeah. And you have to believe that you are worthy of that. You are worthy of going on stage with Kyle C's. You're worthy of, of having whatever house you want. You're worthy of, um, of you know, having the job and the life that you want and having days off too. And this is not just a singular thought. This is an every day, every moment, every waking thought thought. Right. This, this has is, to be in your cell tissue. And this is something that you practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. And once you've practiced up a little bit, like, and it's become a consistent ha habit of being, you'll start attracting things that match and mirror what you are thinking. Yeah, you'll that start affirm attracting. that you've got this. Right, you'll start attracting new friends. You'll start like if you're single, you'll start attracting the type of people you actually want to date, not the people that are just like the people you always tend to end up with that repeat the same patterns you've always been in. You'll start to attract new opportunities, new situations, new new like magical moments, like getting on stage with Kyle Cease or you know an interaction with a stranger. So here's how you know you don't have it. When you say, I believe it, I believe it. Oh my God, it's not happening. What the fuck? And you're all afraid and shit. Oh my God, I believe it. And then you're like, but where is it? But where is it? I need it now. I need it now. And if you need something right now to affirm that you're doing it, you're not fucking doing it. Yeah. Or, you know, another, another way to realize that you're not doing it is if you can keep yourself in that mindset for a week and then as soon as something goes bad... You're like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. I don't deserve this. This is not going to be my life. I, I'm stupid for even wanting this. This is unrealistic. And that happens to, to the best of us. Of course it does. Yeah, and you can always turn back from those moments as well. But, um, you know, it's, it's about being consistent with it. That's what it really comes down to. You can't just, you know, try on... Um, I, like... If you're if you're 300 pounds overweight, you can't just eat salad for a week and then expect to be, you know, a supermodel at the end of the week, right? It, it takes consistency. It, take, it took you a while to get where you are, right now, wherever that is. I'm gonna honor wherever that is for all of you guys, and um, it took a while for you to get where you are now, and it's gonna take a while to basically create a new wiring for your nervous system for you to believe that you are someone else and for you to create a different life for yourself. So be patient.
be loving and kind to yourself and surround yourself with support because there are a lot of people out here doing this work and there's a lot of people out here that can guide you and hold you accountable and help you out and give you advice as well, like whether it's a coach or um, like our, our Active Volcano family, which is just a Facebook page that you can join for free, where it's a community of people all over the world who are doing this work, but might not necessarily be able to afford coaching right now. And so it's just a gathering place on Facebook where you can just go away from your news feed and open up pure positivity, love, support, kindness, empathy, and compassion, um, and connect with other people who are wanting to create this life as well. If you can't let go of your Facebook addiction, you might as well make it a healthy one. Yeah. Might as well, you want, might as well have it feed your spirit. Yeah, so check that out too, guys. It's called the Active Volcano Family. If you're thinking like, yeah, I would like to change my life, but everyone around me is so negative and nobody believes in this stuff, um, go check out the Active Volcano family and join everyone there who's on this journey. And, and you will get so much support and so much love. Um, so go check it out, and we'll see you next week. Awesome. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.